Have you ever wondered how some academics become so famous they're almost superstars? People like Pierre Bourdieu, Richard Dawkins, Judith Butler, for example. Every field has them. No article seems to be without them. Everybody is quoting them. And certain ideas become so popular they really should be given their own talk show. Well, academic fame can be constructed and traced. And in a similar way, it's also possible to follow and trace ideas from scholar to scholar, from language to language, and even from discipline to discipline. That's exactly what my research looks at, the transfer and spread of ideas. And we live in a time where information is key. And yet, the study of information management and how we know what we know has been sort of neglected. Yet this can have huge implications on individuals as well as on entire markets and societies. But if we want to make knowledge transfer visible at all, we have to be very particular about the idea we're looking at and very patient. In my case, I am tracing ideas that have come from the field of sociology and migrated into the discipline of translation studies. And there are some very helpful tools to do that. Especially the field of network studies has contributed a lot to this. And no, network studies is not about who reads your Facebook status. Mm -hmm. Social network scholars have found that we are actually much more likely to receive new information, new knowledge, from people who are very distant from us and not from our immediate circle of colleagues and friends. This is called the strength of weak ties. And my data actually confirms that too. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to follow my ideas, my set of ideas, I sometimes feel a bit like a forensic scientist, you know, like on CSI. I go through decades of journal articles to see when, where, and by whom a certain idea has been brought forward. I look at who is quoting whom, very interesting. And ultimately, I go and ask the authors, where did you get this idea from? And the results really keep surprising me. So far, they are a very interesting contribution to how we understand discipline formation and knowledge transfer. For example, my research also found that knowledge transfer is actually most likely to happen via personal meetings. Now, that's very strong evidence that even in an age where everything and everyone is online all the time, it's actually still the personal contact that is a major catalyst for innovation and knowledge diffusion. A very refreshing thought for you, for me, for all of us. And I look forward to further being surprised by my research. Thank you. <laughs>